Hi, welcome to the video for the PCHEM1 lab experiment solution calorimetry. In this video, I'm going to be going over the basic experiment you're going to be running, uh, showing you the instruments you'll be using, and just the general procedure that you'll be going through. Before we get to that, I want to cover some basic safety though. You always need to wear the proper lab attire when you're running your experiment. Closed-toed shoes, no bare skin at the uh, tabletop level, anything like that. And always wear safety goggles while you're running the experiment. Uh, I do feel the need to point out to you that in this experiment you're going to be using potassium permanganate in a solution. It's going to be very pretty, very purple, and it will stain everything it gets on. So you probably don't want to wear clothes that you really, really like to this experiment. Other than that, um, just pay attention to what your lab instructor tells you. So this is the instrument we're going to be using in the experiment. This is the solution calorimeter. For the first step of this experiment, what you want to do is clean all of the pieces that you're going to be using. So this is your Teflon dish. This is what's called the bell, I believe, in the procedure. And then this is your doer. After you've cleaned everything and made sure that you've gotten all the water and stuff out, you're going to add 100 mils of 0.1 molar HCl directly into this doer here. Once you've done that, you'll measure out between 0.49 and 0.51 grams of the Tris compound and place it into the Teflon dish here. And you'll want to make sure and use the analytical balance when weighing this out to get as much accuracy as possible. Once you have all of your compounds measured out, go ahead and take your doer with the HCl and place it into the calorimeter, like so. And you can take your Teflon dish and glass bell here with your Tris compound. And what you're going to do, it's a little bit complicated, but you're going to take the bell here, you're going to slide this rod onto the top of that. And you want to make sure that this is as far down into the, uh, the neck here as it will go. Um, obviously without putting tons of pressure on it. You don't want to break it. So, there we go. It's a little farther down in there. So, then you tighten it with this little screw here until it's finger tight. And then you'll want to kind of put a finger on the bottom of this Teflon dish and make sure that the glass rod, which was inside of that, is snug onto its little holder in the Teflon dish at the bottom there. And the whole thing goes into the system like so. At this point, you'll put the codes into the calorimeter. Those are in your procedure, so look uh, there to get those. While one person is inputting the codes into the calorimeter, someone else can be connecting the sample holder to this motor by taking the O-ring here and placing it around both of these circles here. So the motor will be spinning and it will spin the whole uh, sample holder. Now once you get all the codes put in, it will automatically start this motor and it will start spinning. After a little while, the system will beep, indicating that thermal equilibrium has been reached. At that point, you're going to do something uh, that I like to call bopping the top of the, the system here, bopping this glass rod. And it's kind of important that you get just the right amount of force on this. If you don't put enough force, what will happen is you won't release the, uh, the mechanism for the the compound to get out into the solution and so you won't have a complete reaction. If you hit it too hard, you might break the glass rod. So I like to call it just a swift pop on the top. And what happens when you do that, so you can see here, the Teflon dish is now completely out of the bell and so all the liquid that is in the doer gets into it and it reacts with the, uh, the compound in there and the thermal change takes place. So after about another 10 minutes, the uh, calorimeter will beep again, indicating that the run is finished. At this point, you can just get the information you need off of the screen here and move on to the next part. Once the first run is finished, what you'll do is you take the whole system apart, clean everything, and then do it two more times. You're going to run this calibration three times, and you'll use the values that you get from the calorimeter to find the CP of your system. 
After you finish the calibration, you'll be doing two different unknowns. The first unknown is going to be potassium nitrate. Now before you start uh, making measurements or weighing out things, once again, make sure everything is clean and dry. After that, you'll pipette 100 milliliters of distilled water into your doer, and you'll weigh out 0.4 to 0.45 grams of potassium nitrate into the Teflon dish. Once you've measured out your potassium nitrate and your water, you're going to put the system together just like you did for the calibration, the same setup. You'll put in the codes. The codes will be slightly different this time, so make sure you're paying attention to your procedure. And then it'll be just the same. You'll bop the top of the system here to release the, the compound when it beeps, and then when it beeps again, your system is finished and you can get your data. For your second unknown, the first thing you need to do is once again make sure that your system and all of its parts are clean and dry. After that you're going to be weighing out 1.5 grams of an iron sulfate hydrate compound and placing it in a beaker. To that you're going to be adding 150 mils of one normal sulfuric acid and you're going to stir that and let it sit for about 20 minutes. Because you're letting it sit for so long, it's probably a good idea to get this started while your previous unknown is running. Once that's done sitting and everything is uh, ready to go, you can pipette 100 mils of the mixture into the calorimeter. Next, you're going to take a small amount of potassium permanganate. You're going to place it in the mortar and you're going to grind it up with a pestle until it's a pretty fine powder. Then you're going to weigh out accurately 0.1 grams of that powder and place it into the Teflon dish. Once you have your potassium permanganate in your Teflon dish, you're going to go ahead and place the bell over it, put it on there good and tight, and then you're going to take 10 mils of one molar sulfuric acid and you're going to pipette it into the top of the bell. Now this step is going to be kind of difficult because as you can kind of see here, it's a very small opening. So what will happen is, if you put your pipette in too far, it will clog the opening, and as you let it out, it's just going to come spilling out the top. So you have to be very careful and not plug the hole. And that will allow the sulfuric acid to come into the bell here and um, dissolve the potassium permanganate. Now once you have it, uh, all the sulfuric acid in the system, you're actually going to shake it for about 20 minutes. And that might seem a little bit excessive, but it takes at least that long for the potassium permanganate to dissolve in the acid. If after 20 minutes of shaking you can see little uh, dots of really dark purple color, it probably means that you have not completely dissolved uh, the potassium permanganate. You can show it to your lab instructor and he or she should be able to uh, let you know if you're ready to go or not. Once you have your solutions ready, You'll assemble the system just like you have before. You'll punch in the codes. Again, they'll be slightly different than the calibration. Just look to your procedure. Uh, make sure you have your little O-ring here all hooked up because once you punch in the codes, the, the motor will start turning. And then it's just like before. Wait for the first beep, pop the top. Wait for the second beep, get your data. Once the calorimeter is finished running, You'll want to check the Teflon dish and make sure there aren't any purple spots left on the bottom of it. If there are, that means that your potassium permanganate did not completely dissolve uh, before you started the system going, which unfortunately means you have to redo that part of the experiment. So check uh, with your lab instructor to make sure that everything dissolved properly. Well that does it for this video. Um, I hope that it helped you gain a little bit better understanding of what you're going to be doing this week. Just remember, always use the proper safety equipment, and I hope you have a great time doing this lab.